<clears throat> so hello everyone welcome to let's crack upsc csc english with an academy and my name is vijay kumar and i have 5 years of teaching experience for civil services and i also appeared for civil services interview uh, twice and i have given this mains examination more than couple of times and every time i have given this examination i have cleared the prelims clear so despite of being a failure i have gained huge amount of knowledge uh, in the course of preparation i have learned many things and i have learned how to crack this examination with some smart techniques and what are the core areas which i have to cover so these things i have focused on very much clear so in this way uh, the tactics which i have used to crack this examination so i'll share those tactics with you uh, like i'll be focusing on prelims i'll be helping you in your preliminary examination mains as well as through interview stages clear and daily i'll be coming up with one particular topic which are very important for your preliminary examination clear so daily like at uh, i'll take a small sub topic from geography first we have started up with geography and i'll try to cover all the topics in the geography which are very important for your preliminary examination clear so in this regard i'll try to focus on every aspect and i'll try to focus on every corner clear so before we start up with the lecture of natural vegetation so we will be seeing about one of the india's largest learning platform that is an academy so if you want to crack upsc csc just by sitting at your home uh, which is like you can crack it with india's largest learning platform that is an academy just what you have to do is you have to get the subscription done so how to get the subscription done just open play store and drop an academy learning app and once you drop an academy learning app your app would be installed and in that go to home page choose your goal upsc csc and you will find a get subscription button over there so try to get the subscription done as soon as possible clear so like there would be many doubts which uh, uh, generally aspirant uh, which generally aspirant would be coming across with what are the doubts which aspirants come across with uh, the subscriptions are like so what we get when we get the subscription done see these are the things which you are going to get like daily you will be getting live classes like live classes are of two way communication methods clear you can chat with your educator you can engage in discussions ask your doubts and answer polls would be there all the things happen while the classes are going on apart from that like a daily live, like you will find huge amount of test series on the platform like more amount of quizzes are present so that you can evaluate your preparation and structured courses would be present it's not like random educators come and random early they will teach this but in a structured way uh, we would be having the structured course clear all our courses like uh, which are present on the platform are structured in line with india's top educators and this is the most important point unlimited access like for example let's say you have missed today's lecture uh, you can watch the recorded lecture and you can watch that recorded lecture in number of times this is the most important aspects clear uh, so in alone upsc csc category we have approximately 100 top educators of the country who come from every corner of the country and they will teach on this particular platform in this there are see these four are few educators top educators on the platform clear and uh, see this is most important once go and watch this special classes you will understand what actually they are so special classes what generally happens is like uh, once you open the app you will find a separate column called a special classes go and watch these lectures you will have an idea on how the classes actually run on the platform and who are the top educators who are involved on the particular platform clear like apart from that you will also know the courses which are going to come on the platform this is also highly important for you see these are the subscription prices clear so per month 7200 3 month 18000 6 month 28200 12 month 36 so these are the discounted prices clear so if you want to get 10% discount on this particular figure so you have to use the code called as vk10 and then you can proceed to pay see for example uh, like if you are going to take for 12 month it is actually 40000 but when you use this code right vk10 you would be getting 10% discount on this particular 
uh, price which is present apart from this if you see uh, there is minute difference between 12 month and 24 month if you see for 12 month you will however end up paying 36,000 and for 24 month you will just end up paying 43,200 so this is the major difference between this so people who are planning for 12 month I generally suggest them to go for 24 month subscription itself is this clear and now many of your doubts would be raised sir is entire syllabus would be covered answer is yes entire UPSC CSC syllabus is covered if I use your code then can I only watch your lectures no you can watch all the lectures of all the educators on an academy who teaches for UPSC CSC clear so these doubts generally aspirants would be getting if you find any queries you can just contact to the uh, like uh, help team which is present who can deal better in this regard clear so we'll start up with this climatic regions and natural vegetation in general uh, so there are uh, many geographers many meteorologists who have given uh, the climatic divisions um, uh, the climatic regions so in this way the Koppen's classification is the most accepted one done if you see uh, on the basis of see whenever we discuss about climate or climatic regions you have to discuss about three important points one is temperature and one is rainfall in that region and one is vegetation in that region clear so in generally what happens is like uh, the climatic regions mostly they are dependent upon the rainfall clear so on the basis of rainfall on the basis of temperature we generally decide that particular climatic region if you see here you found uh, the shaded region like the dark bluish color the shaded region which is present that is mountain type of climate like mountainous type high altitude type of climate so just a light bluish color which you can see here this is humid subtropical you can see this uh, dark uh, like shaded regions which are available here clear so this is completely arid region covering this we have semi arid so in this way in India on the basis of rainfall and on the basis of temperature we generally decide the climatic regions clear so please try to focus on this climatic regions on the basis of this we would be having the natural vegetation which is highly important for you clear so natural vegetation of India if you see climate soil and topography are the major factors that influence natural vegetation clear so climate in the sense like it influences uh, it includes rainfall and temperature as well do remember this clear so in India mostly the natural vegetation which is present that is dominated by climate soil and topography clear so main climatic factors are rainfall and temperature do remember this point on the basis of rainfall itself generally we calculate see for example just these are some of the tricks for which uh, you have to remember these particular things right so if the uh, rainfall is more than 200 centimeter then it would be called as evergreen forestry if the rainfall is in between 100 to 200 centimeter so we can call it as monsoon deciduous forestry so if we know where in those regions we have heavy rainfalls or rainfalls in between these zones we can easily understand this clear so see if rainfall is between 50 to 100 we find dry deciduous or tropical savanna if the rainfall is between 25 to 50 centimeter then we will find a dry thorny shrub forestry if the rainfall is present below 25 centimeter we find desert forest uh, like desert type of vegetation do remember this your job would be done so if you remember them most of your job would be done for example if i say like uh, in the mumbai region we find more than 200 centimeter of rainfall so what kind of forestry evergreen in Telangana and the Rail Sima region, we would be experiencing rainfall between 50 to 100. So we experience dry deciduous. Uh, so in Uttar Pradesh and in some of the belts of Punjab, we experience rainfall between 100 to 200. There we find monsoonal deciduous forestry or moist forestry. So if I say rainfall is less than 25 centimeter, then we find desert completely, arid conditions clear in that way. So we can see some of the forest in India, which are of moist type, which have high rainfall like a category can be divided as moist to tropical forestry like tropical wet evergreen tropical semi evergreen tropical moist deciduous littoral and swamp these all are included in moist tropical forestries and if you see dry tropical forestries like tropical dry evergreen tropical dry deciduous tropical thorn forestry do remember this and in the mountainous region if you see subtropical broad leafed 
uh, hill forestry subtropical moist hill that is most of the pine vegetation subtropical dry evergreen so all these are found within the subtropical mountainous regions so in the subtropical mountainous regions at higher elevations completely more than 3000 meter elevation we can find this kind of forestry mountain wet temperate himalayan moist temperate himalayan dry temperate so all these are of same similarities like mountainial uh, mountain subtropical forestry and mountain temperate forestry so these have just bit of elevation difference that's it apart from this like for example if i say like if you started moving from a plain region towards the highest hill station so while you have been traveled towards this junction to the uh, like the hill station you will find all these forestry in a row like mountain subtropical first you will find that later on moving higher to the altitudes you will find mountain temperate forestry so in such a way the first type just remember uh, the characteristics of that particular uh, climatic like uh, natural vegetation try to remember its distribution maximum chances and prelims wherever the question comes the question would be coming from this aspect itself clear so the first type of forestry which is moist type of forestry in the moist tropical forest the first one is tropical wet evergreen do remember this point clear so tropical wet evergreen it is nothing but like if you see like wherever we have more than 250 centimeter of rainfall in those regions we would be finding this because wet evergreen everyone know this right so why they are called as evergreen many people have this notion that those trees doesn't shade there is no tree in this world which doesn't shade that please try to understand this statement there is no tree in this world which doesn't shade if you find any such kind of tree it, it becomes the eighth wonder of the world so there is no such kind of tree which is present clear so what generally happens is like tropical wet evergreen forestry which is present uh, like it is evergreen because because of maximum species development over there so each particular species shades in one particular season that's the reason why every time whenever we see we can observe this as evergreen forestry clear so like the temperature in this region of tropical wet evergreen it would be somewhere around 25 to 27 degrees centigrade clear so dry season is distinctly short as i have said rainfall is more than 250 centimeter dry season would be present but it would be very short clear if you see the characteristics evergreen and mesophytic they are lofty trees like they have thick canopy that means denseness is very high and less undergrowth clear so sunlight doesn't even reach the surface that's the reason why wherever we find tropical wet evergreen forestry agriculture is not possible over there so plants adapted to neither too dry nor too wet type of climate clear so in this regard if you see the distribution in regions where we find more than 250 centimeter uh, of rainfall we would be finding the distribution over there so on the western side of western guards from where the monsoon enters this is one region obviously we would be experiencing maximum precipitation so in the regions of purvanchal hills so in the northeastern states we will be finding huge precipitation like in the states of meghalaya nagaland mizoram manipur clear and in andaman nicobar islands so these are the regions where we find tropical wet evergreen so the hardwood which is present in this region the hardwood is important so the timber of these forest is fine grained hard and durable but it is hard to exploit that's the reason why commercial exploitation doesn't happen why because we find multiple species growth over there then apart from this if you see like important species of this forestry include mahogany misua white cedar jamun canes and bamboo clear so if you see like the denseness of the forestry here hope you know about all this but just as per imagination clear so the next one is tropical semi evergreen forestry they are transitional forest like between tropical wet evergreen forestry and tropical deciduous like uh, they just are surrounded with the tropical wet evergreen forestry itself clear they are comparatively drier areas to that of tropical wet evergreen forestry they also have good amount of precipitation like 200 to 250 but comparatively they have less precipitation so if you see the mean annual temperature that would be a bit less comparatively to that 24 to 27 degree centigrade and the dry season is not short like in tropical evergreen forestry we would be having some good distinct dry season associated with this tropical semi evergreen forestry 
like distribution it is very simple adjacent to the regions where we find tropical wet evergreen that is the distribution of tropical semi evergreen forestry like on the western coast of india that is common monsoon where it enters uh, surrounding it and in the purvanchal ranges like around assam regions you find this and in the lower slopes of eastern himalayas you find this and in the regions of odisha andhra pradesh as well so where we find like uh, cyclonic rainfall we can observe these kind of things and andaman nicobar islands if you see the semi evergreen forest are less dense comparatively to that they are more gregarious so like uh, they live in colonies uh, hence when they live in colonies we won't find much multiple species so they live in pure stands hence they are highly uh, important for commercial exploitation so the hardwood which is uh, being taken from these particular uh, tropical semi evergreen forestry so that tropical wood have huge commercial viability all across the india clear so these uh, like forestry all, also like the forestry which is present here they are also characterized by many species if you could see like rosewood mesua thorny bamboo laurel so all these are abundant in western ghats region like where we have lower altitudes and in the himalayan region a bit higher altitudes we can see white cedar indian chestnut champa and mango etc these are found in himalayan regions clear so next is tropical moist deciduous in the regions where we have rainfall 100 to 200 we find tropical moist deciduous so annual temperature around 27 degree so spring and summer season uh, summer are dry like between winter and summer we find this particular spring season so during this season we have dry conditions which are associated clear so characteristics of this tropical moist deciduous we have tropical moist deciduous and we also have tropical dry deciduous so like deciduous wherever you see this word called as deciduous just blindly remember this statement like deciduous forestries are those which would shade their leaves deciduous forestries they would be shading their leaves in dry seasons in order to overcome the drought conditions or dry conditions which are going to happen in the near future clear if you see the deciduous trees the trees drop their leaves during spring and early summer when sufficient moisture is not available do remember wherever you find this word in the world wherever you see this deciduous the same scene repeats so general appearance is bare in extreme summers like uh, some bare kind of thing like uh, you can't observe the denseness of that forestry clear tropical moist deciduous forestry present irregular top story like uh, we would be having 25 to 16 meter height clear apart from this uh, heavily buttressed trees and fairly complete undergrowth is present this forest occupy much larger area than evergreen forest but large tracts under this forest have been cleared for cultivation so when comparatively to that of evergreen forestry and semi evergreen forestry these uh, particular forestry would be having large tracts which have been cleared for cultivation so distribution if you see the belt running along the western ghats <clears throat> surrounding the belt of evergreen forestry clear so in and around regions where we find evergreen forestry so the belt surrounding to that of evergreen forestry we can find these particular uh forestry of tropical moist deciduous clear so you can also see a strip of uh, strip along the shivalik range including tera and babar belt please please do remember this particular statement many people they would be confused completely like whenever they ask a question if they uh, give a statement in this way like the himalayan ranges portion of shivaliks have tropical moist deciduous forestry they will be completely confused in that regard why because generally whenever they think about mountainous regions they start thinking about the pine forestry alpine forestry clear they don't think about moist deciduous or any kind of deciduous forestry so hence a strip which is present all along the shivalik ranges they are present in this particular region hence they are highly important for you apart from this if you see like in and around manipur mizoram and hills of eastern madhya pradesh and chatisgarh some portions of this and chota nagpur plateau and odisha region and part of west bengal and amman nicobar island so all these regions they experience this tropical moist deciduous forestry 
you can see the bare visualization they are not that dense as that of evergreen forestry please please do remember this and try to imagine this particular area like their sunlight is reaching very perfectly and you can see the tall canopy extending up to 25 to 60 meters clear so the timber they provide uh, valuable timber like teak and hence they are open in nature commercial viability is also highly important so it is comparatively easy to exploit this forestry due to their high degree of gregariousness you can see more amount of pure stands of trees are present hence tropical moist deciduous they provide huge amount of valuable timber so that's the reason why uh, like the Myanmar region which is present that contributes alone three-fourth of the timber production in the world do remember this point and species like uh, they are not they are somewhat different species which are present like teak sal laurel rosewood amla jamun bamboo etc are most important forestries and species which are present in this region next is in the moist category we find littoral and swamp forestry like uh, wherever we have brackish water like brackish water nothing but mixture of sea water and fresh water in estuaries uh, generally they would be considered as brackish water and salinity can range from 0 0.5 parts per thousand to 35 parts per thousand generally we calculate salinity accordingly with this so the average salinity of the oceans would be somewhere around 35 parts per thousand so salinity varies accordingly and if you see littoral forestry they occur in and around the deltas estuaries and creeks prone to the tidal influences so in those regions where we have the combination of this sea water and fresh water there mostly we can observe this particular littoral and swamp forestry clear so if you could see all along the deltas of ganga mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri so all these regions they have swamp forestries which are associated and if you see littoral forests occur at a several places along the coast but swamp forestry are confined to this deltaic regions clear so like uh, near the godavari basin we have koringa wildlife sanctuary do remember this and these mangrove forestry occur all along the coast in sheltered estuaries as i have already said this so they most pronounced and the densest is uh, in the Sundarban Delta region. So the Gangetic Delta is called as Sundarban Delta. The littoral and swamp forestry mostly you can see over there. Where the most important species which is developed in that region is Sundari. So because of development of that predominant species called as Sundari, that region has been named as Sundarban Delta region. Clear. So timber, it provides hard and durable timber like which is used for construction, building purposes and making boats. Like most important trees is, uh, species which are present that is Sundari, uh, like Agar and Rhizophora. You can see like at the mixage of fresh water. So these are generally called as backish water. We would be having mixage of fresh water and sea water. So near to the fresh water and sea water mixage, we can find this. Clear. So next uh, tropical dry evergreen. So the annual rainfall in and around 100 centimeter we can observe this. So all along the coast of Tamil Nadu we can see this kind of dry evergreen forestry. Because this is only one region which experiences rainfall in winter season or from the northeastern monsoons. So temperature is bit high comparatively to those of uh, evergreen and semi evergreen that is around 28 degrees centigrade. So the growth of evergreen forestry in areas of such low rainfall is bit strange but the reason behind it is northeastern monsoon which generally develops during winter season. Characteristics uh, you can see like uh, short stature trees up to 12 meters high uh, with complete canopy bamboos and grasses. So try to read these characteristics and please do remember this particular thing like uh, most of the land under this forest have been cleared for agriculture or for caserina plantations. What are caserina plantations? This was in news recently like recent in the sense past six months like before six months this was in news. So there are chances that you may get a question this time from this clear there are chances. Chances are least but chances are good enough to get a question clear. So this caserina is most popular farm forestry in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Odisha, Maharashtra, Gujarat and Karnataka. So it is most important in particular Tamil Nadu region clear. So if you see this caserina plantations it resembles feathery conifer forestry. 
like the conifer forestry which is present that uh, that look it would be having and they are rapid growing carefree species that can grow in various climates and if you see they have the ability to fix atmospheric nitrogen this is the most most important point so whenever you find about casserina plantations please try to remember them they are highly important for your understanding you can see they have some conifer uh, like you are getting the visualization of the hill forest trees right so these kind of structures they grow in various climates and they have the capability of fixing the nitrogen so in these regions we find this casserina plantations clear next tropical dry deciduous like in the region of rainfall around 100 to 150 centimeter we can see this so completely it, it is visible in dry nature you can see like the forestry itself is appearing very dry in nature so the seasonal rainfall makes these regions very dry and during the dry season these forestries would be uh, like shedding their leaves off uh, like as i've already said wherever we find deciduous forestry they shade their leaves and in this regard try to see these aspects clear and try to see the distribution which is most important clear like if you see except uh, they occur in an irregular white strip running from the foot of himalayas to kanyakumari except in rajasthan western ghats and west bengal region we find this dry deciduous here and there where we find the limited amount of precipitation away from the maritime influence like teak axelwood rosewood common bamboo red sanders laurel they are important clear so these forests have suffered from overgrazing and fire since the decades and uh, if you see large uh, uh, the large tracts of this forest also have been cleared for the agricultural purposes clear so tropical thorn forestry rainfall less than 75 cm humidity obviously would be less than 50% clear so temperature is pretty high 25 to 30 and characteristics these trees are low wide scattered thorn forestry like wherever we have less precipitation the leaves they themselves convert themselves into thorns uh, so to overcome this particular precipitational aspects clear so the indian wild date is common some grasses also grow in this region so distribution if you see about tropical thorn forestry rajasthan everyone know southwestern punjab western haryana runoff kutch region and the neighboring parts of saurashtra and they degenerate in desert type of thar desert uh, they also occur on the leeward side that is backward side of the western ghats in the rain shadow region if you see uh, the maharashtra uh, like the vidarbha portion of maharashtra falls in rain shadow region and the hyderabad karnataka which is present that also falls under that is eastern karnataka that also falls under rain shadow region and telangana that also falls under rain shadow region and some portions of andhra pradesh they also falls under rain shadow region clear so do remember this the most important species are neem babul and cactus which are present clear so try to remember them and subtropical broadleaf all these are at higher altitudes just remember its importance and distribution clear so try to see them and try to remember them as much as you can then so i have just given these once go through this make a pause over here and try to see all the visualizations clear so hence thank you for watching this lesson and please click on the bell icon for the continuous notifications and please do subscribe to let's crack upsc csc english channel and use my code called as vk10 so that you would be getting 10 percent discount clear so once again i am repeating so these last forestries which are present uh, those of hill ranges clear i have just given the slides go through them make a pause over here and just go through them that's it clear in the nilgiri hills and in the palani hills how they form just once go through this you will have a like a broader idea related with this try to see the distribution clear this they are not much important but once go through them clear hence thank you for watching this lesson have an awesome day jai hind